Flown One was um, a product that we've we've brought into uh, the Kemp portfolio prior to joining forces with uh, with Progress. And ultimately, what uh, what what Flown One does is is more about network monitoring and visibility. And you know, when we look at network monitoring, we'll drill into some of the uh, the, the key things here. And Jiri's going to work with me on a, a a demo a little later on in in the in the, the slot here. So thinking about you know what is uh, is network monitoring and and the eyes and the ears in the uh, in the room here. Ultimately, I mean, logging and monitoring is a is is one thing, but then being able to drill down into the forensics of of what is in those logs is an even more valid uh, you know, valid point to to the to the security point. And I think you know, coupled with the flow on piece and the WhatsApp Gold, and WhatsApp Gold is another product that uh, was uh, recently acquired by. Um, by progress, I think what it does do is it gives us this ability to bring in to view all of these different uh, and logging and monitoring tools to blend one you know, where from an infrastructure perspective we can start off with the the basics and then move into some more of the deeper forensics and the analytics that Flowmon brings into play. So Flowmon and WhatsApp Gold, we've you know we've done a a bit of a joined up effort here around being able to. Um, you know, just just sort of show where, from an infrastructure perspective, and I think you know, it's useful to ask clients what are they using in 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 the in, in the the field of monitoring and logging when it comes to which brands of software that they're they're using. Because effectively, not all you know, not all of these uh, technologies are equal. And and having seen myself in previous lives, where you know, monitoring could just be something as simple as a PRTG monitor, just pinging devices to see whether they're up, down, or indifferent. And then for others, you know, they need this deep level of insight into what's up, what's uh, what's what's available. And I think you know, from a features perspective, we've got to have some form of standard here. So things like SNMP compatibility, along with you know, the ability to produce bandwidth reports, as well as visual mappings and everything else, it's it, there's got to be a comprehensive solution. So I'm going to show you, you know, between myself and Jiri, how Flowmon really comes into play here. Um, so you know, top business benefits on the Flowmon side, it's the investigation times that we can save on. I think it's an average of 200 plus days there or thereabouts from a breach perspective to understand where, you know, what the root cause is, do the analysis and then report that incident to uh, to this. And, and with what you're going to see from Jiri, hopefully this will one, save time on that investigation and two, mitigate the, the, the risk uh, going forward. So just to touch a, a little on what's up gold, because I think it's important that you understand, you know, why why do we have both products available in the uh, in the portfolio around the network monitoring side of things, and it's important to have a, that that eye in the sky just to see what's going on. We can also monitor everything on the network, so using and some of the discovery tools just by doing a, a, a just an SNMP walk, find out what's on the network and do an ICMP sweep and see what else has been identified on the network. And in some cases, you know, we've, we've seen customers sort of say, well, we didn't realize we've got devices that are, are on the network, they're rogue devices, sending out spurious information, et cetera. And you know, getting that to, to the point where they're getting alerts and, and proactive resolution of those issues to fix those problems. This is where WhatsApp Gold and Flowmon really come into play. So you know, from a security perspective, I, I think what is important here is that we position the two solutions as one as a network monitoring tool. And then you can see on the right hand side in this diagram here on the uh, you know, on the, 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 the Flowmon side. And we're not talking infrastructure monitoring at, uh, at the same level for Flowmon. And, you know, and hopefully this will all become clear throughout. Um, but you know, application, network, and security monitoring, with all of the tools, some of the heuristics, some of the techniques that are in play here, along with you know, some of the uh, behavioural patterns that come into play, it means that when we you know, when we're looking at what's going on within the eyes of the network, we can really pull out detail when it comes to uh, uh, to, to that security detail. I just wanted to add that basically Flowmon can provide additional level of the visibility for, for the infrastructure monitoring from deep level. So you can see much more details like what's going on in the traffic, like who is actually providing uh, the, the traffic on the network and basically what could be the, the source of, uh, of the impact, let's say some slowness or uh, issues which are you know caused by uh, network infrastructure uh, on it. 
Okay, so so and just to tie into uh, to to a rounded picture from an infrastructure perspective, you know, from a, a, um, a WhatsApp gold and the dashboards that it provides. I mean, we're getting all low level detail around things like CPU. So we're doing some SNMP polling and pulling back uh, internal workings of, of you know, what, what we're seeing on the ground. What it's not doing is you know, we're, not, we're not creating or carving out that ability to make business decisions as a result. With things like Flowmon, when it comes to the security side of things, we're interacting with the firewalls and the routers and, and looking out for things like malware and ransomware. And, and where there may be a breach or the, a manifestation of a breach over a protocol that you, know, you wouldn't typically see through the, the, the dashboard within WhatsApp Gold, this is where Flowmon really adds that value. I just wanted to add that uh, basically details which we are getting from uh, firewall router switches are uh, enhancing the visibility onto something which is not normally maybe seen on the network and it's completely passive. So basically we are not uh, able to be seen, you know, if there is some detection ongoing on such a traffic which is delivered uh, to the Flowmon uh, system. It's basically using the metadata which are coming from firewall or I mean, the bar, these kind of uh, devices. Yeah, and it's safe to say that you know some of the um, integrations that you've got with things like uh, the Open Fabric uh, ecosystem with uh, I think it was Fortinet, wasn't it? That's uh, for their FortiGate and FortiSeam firewalls. You've got uh, you know, collaboration and cooperation there. There's also other you know, other um, methodologies around Cisco, and, and we can make business decisions that if, say, for example, a, a, an infected laptop that came into the business with malware on it. You know, the user's been into a, an untrusted network. They picked up something on the shoes within the uh, uh, the device, and then you know, ultimately, unless you're actually trawling through these logs on a regular basis, you're not going to see this until you you know cast your eyes over that detail. And then you know, once the laptop's back in the corporate network, you know, it then starts communicating with things like botnets and command and control, and all of a sudden there's an outbreak as a result. So this is you know, this is where Flowmon, from a, a visibility and reporting perspective, can uh, can really sort of drill down into the protocols and you know, stop things at source rather than waiting for things to uh, to manifest, and then you know, that breaches then on on the uh, the hands or on the shoulders of of the admins to uh, to to pro you know, close down. So I saw on the part that compared the, the two solutions, there were some, you know, threat, yeah, that one, threat analysis, indicator of compromise, um, detection, all, all of that security monitoring that's available. Is it, when you're talking about integrations with firewall, are we pushing or pulling to the firewall? So specifically maybe, are we relying on the firewall to see something and then make an alert um, through a, a like a, a log or a API and then so basically, uh, over here, we are getting the data from the firewall or let's say other devices on the network. Uh, it it's comes like the flow data, yeah, it's metadata in general. We are like finding what, what is the problematic, let's say, behavior. If there is something behavior anomaly or the communication with some blacklist IP address or with the C2 server. So this is the indication of the compromises. And then there is arise the event which is created. And this event is triggering, let's say some activity which you can uh, configure via script and like push it uh, via, for example, REST API to, to the appropriate firewall to block it, let's say, or put it into the quarantine. So basically you will block uh, the, the communication leaving the, the inside network. Okay, so the threat detection is actually yours. Yeah, it's based on, on our, yeah, it's ours, yeah. It mentions here encrypted traffic analysis. How are you doing that? Is it, you know, typical man in the middle decrypt and recrypt, or is it just header and metadata analysis? It's it's more about, let's say, how, how the structure looks like, because uh, in general, uh, NetFlow, NetFlow protocol or NetFlow data are not working with the payload. So we are more like relating if there is something suspicious from the behavior activity. So let's say there's somebody communicating with IP address or uh, let's say country, which was not there visible before, or if it's like encrypted traffic. So we are trying to see if there is any uh, let's say low, low level of the TLS version, for instance. Yeah? So uh, something like, or let's say there is somebody who is supposed to communicate with specific set of IP addresses. For instance, it can be like you say man in the middle, let's say there are like, certain set of DNS servers, which local user or SMTP servers, they are supposed to be used. And suddenly it will change. Yeah, so let's say I will bring the laptop uh, in the network environment. I will play like DHCP role. I will actually uh, 
provide IP address and all the traffic will be coming across my myself. So basically I will take all the traffic and this is actually changing the behavior, which is not, should be there or which was not there before. Yeah, so this is the way how, how we are doing it. So it's more related to behavior than like uh, the analysis on the payload because we are not using the payload of it. No, and the, the impact of inspecting the payload would be phenomenal, wouldn't it, on this uh, this side, Jerry? And yeah, and it's anyway, it's it's encrypted. Yeah, so yeah. we if we would like to work with that, we would need to do like re-encryption, re for example. But with the combination, for example, with Loadmaster, which is going to be discussed, we can be actually behind <laughs> behind the Loadmaster where the traffic is coming unencrypted, you know, be, be behind uh, between the Loadmaster and actually virtual servers where the specific application is running. Then we can also see what is happening inside on the traffic because we have also ability to do uh, packet capturing and, and no investigation on, on that level. I have a question regarding uh, Flowmon. Also, Progress acquired Camp. Are there any plans to combine the two products? So I see a lot of possibilities to to uh, glue them together and to have some crossovers. Is there anything already in the development? Basically, we we uh, yeah, you're right, and we added actually the capability to provide NetFlow data also on the load master. So basically, you can feed. <laughs> You can feed uh, the Flowmon collector with the data which are coming from Loadmaster. So you can also investigate the data on that level which are provided because we have uh, pure visibility on, on that level. Not only, let's say, a layer three, layer four. So we are coming up to layer seven in that case. Yeah, we're, we're about to release some detail later on this month. Well, it'll be early, early April now, but uh, there's a joined up effort between the WhatsApp Gold and Loadmaster and also uh, Flowmon and Loadmaster that's that's already in play today. But uh, and we keep an eye out for that in, uh, in, in, in the press because ultimately, and I think what is apparent there is the, the, the Loadmaster can ingest data and also send on that data to be interpreted and, uh, you know, and analyzed through WhatsApp Gold and through Flowmon. So there's a total sort of trilogy of, uh, of, of setup there that, that what we see at the load balancer level, we can send on to WhatsApp Gold. We can also interpret via the, uh, the eyes of, of Flowmon. But you know, moving concentric circles further out to the network, we can do that across the board. So it doesn't just have to sort of stop at the uh, at the load master level. There's there's a lot more visibility beyond. When you say automated threat re, uh, threat response, what are the firewall vendors that you're able to directly integrate with to to do those responses? Yeah, it can be actually done with uh, any kind of firewall which is supporting um, kind of like REST API calls. Yeah, which is capable to do because it, it's working like that. We are running the, the script on the, on the background, taking the attributes from the detection, for instance, IP address, MAC address, and then pulling this uh, information towards the firewall with the specific uh, details. We have like integration done with uh, with Checkpoint and also recently with uh, the FortiGate firewall, for example. Yeah, so we, they are like scripts like ready and we can like give it to you so you, so you can also like play with that and adjust, for example, some function, edit, whatever. Okay, and then in the other direction, uh, what happens if the firewall vendor and you both detect the same thing? How do you prevent, you know, a conflict in the response? Uh, it's more about, there's no like conflict check, like for example, if there's blocking. So it's more about, let's say you can put it in the quarantine for some time. And uh, like from, let's say from one perspective, because in general, we are like passive solution. So it, this is something like, we're just enhancing or adding the, the additional thing uh, and, and reaction on on these anomalies, which are detected, you know, from, from the traffic. Over so, you, so you're not paying attention to what the vendor themselves are doing. I mean, have, have you ever worked a security incident where two engineers are trying to remediate at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Yeah. So basically, we it's just a complementary thing. So it's not like thing we we are like uh, overtaking the role because uh, like firewall role. I mean, yeah, because it, this is the, the main thing which. Uh, firewall is doing, but it's more about let's say the traffic which is trying to leave the uh, the network company companies or company network because uh, we are like really really good for the monitoring uh, of the inside traffic yeah which is basically normally not inspected and we are trying to seal the gap which is between the perimeter and endpoint security. Firewalls are pretty good at detecting stuff that's going outbound. So if the value is that we're seeing stuff on the network. Um, internally to the firewall wouldn't normally see, 
and we're alerting on that and telling the firewall, but now we're only protecting at that egress, not within lateral movement within the organization. What, where's the value proposition with that? And can we do that internally at switches and routers versus at the firewall? Yeah, it's more about that uh, usually like firewalls are based on some signatures, which are, you know, updated regularly on they are looking for, it also depends if they are doing, for instance, some deep packet inspection, right? We are working with the general and they are also limited with the with the number of the, the connection they can expect, for instance. Uh, on, on the flow level, like what we do, we can, we can process like a lot of sessions and also sessions which are not bypassing the firewall. Yeah, for example, the east-west traffic. And... Uh, uh, so then this is the, this is the reason that, for instance, you can have the, the, the use case where there is uh, some uh, malware infection inside and they would like to leak the data outside and how you can recognize if this connection is, let's say, valid or invalid. Yeah. So it's additional, uh, additional, mm, let's say, protection from, from us, which is uh, based on the behavior anomalies or, for instance, the, the data which, which are trying to leave the, the network. For example, uh, also I would like to show in my live demo that, that when there is, let's say, leakage of data via ICMP protocol, which can be happening. Yeah? And if you are not in inspecting what is inside, so it can, it can potentially look like normal traffic. Yeah. But this is uh, like behavior anomaly where, where we, we are like, uh, checking like what is, what is the size of the packets which are, which are sent across the the, um, the network and you, you cannot see, for example, the payload, yeah, because you see that it's suspicious, like the size of the packets, because normally they are really small, but if there is some leakage of data, they can be potentially uh, bigger than the usual thing, which has uh, just a couple of bytes. I think that the firewall okay. vendors are gonna tell you they can they can do that. So I'm just trying to understand what's different. We're also you know doing SSL uh, decryption usually at the firewall. so. I'm assuming you guys are doing something a little bit differently that that slides in and adds some value there. I'm just still wrapping my head around that. Yeah, we are actually trying to learn what is what is the uh, let's say normal behavior of the network, and there uh, and these also like adjusted like because we are using the machine le machine learning for it, also the artificial intelligence how the traffic is normally going. Let's say there is some. Uh, change in the behavior from the perspective that let's say you are opening a lot of uh, connections to, to specific port or to specific uh, locations. Yeah. And these kind of stuff uh, is that behavior analysis where we are trying to, to find out uh, if there is something out of the normal, let's say, behavior of that, let's say, user, which is, which is on, on the network. Okay. So you're, you're, tr I'm wrapped up on the firewall thing. You guys are doing that and we can do with that data how we please and a firewall integration is one option. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be it can be connected. I mean, like or use actually the, the, the detection, that kind of detection we are observing and we can provide this information to the firewall and actually additionally block it the traffic, which is, uh, I mean, not, not block it. We are not blocking the traffic. We are instructing or sending the uh, information to the firewall, which, which will do, do the blockage, right? And uh, this is like additional thing because uh, let's say uh, the IP address, which is communicating is not on, on the list, which or in the behavior list where the firewall is using. Yeah, so how, uh, there is an additional concept of it uh, to, to get more data and ability to block it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to try to break this down because I'm having trouble wrapping my head uh, around exactly what's happening here. So there's, there's two pieces to this that, that I'm hearing. There's a detection piece and there's a response piece. Um, so you're, you're saying your detection uh, piece is largely based on um, statistics then. You're doing a statistical it's normalization and you're looking for abnormal uh, or signature matches for the detection thing. So uh, am I understanding that correct? It's a, it's a combination. It, it can be uh, based on, on the machine learning, also the signature based like uh, for the specific, uh, uh, let's say kind of um, abnormal behavior from the perspective, let's say I'm communicating with specific IP or domains, which are on, on the blacklist or in our threat intelligence part. Yeah, this could be one part. There, there, there's also, for instance, if let's say you are trying to get uh, to brute force uh, or the password spraying against a specific service, 
Yeah. So this is something like we are learning the uh, the frequency of of the of the password trials, like what, what they are doing to compromise the specific service. Uh, uh, and or there is specific part like uh, you are supposed to communicate with specific uh, server for DNS traffic, SMTP traffic, etc. Uh, it can be any because you can you can also set it up. But I mean, if there is find uh, some case like that, so this is notified uh, to you and you can also work with it. For okay, so now I've detected something that I think um, is malicious and I have, I assume, a choice to either alert or respond. So if we're responding, you have two vendors of firewalls that you can push rule changes to, but you're not getting a direct communication from them whether or not their engine is responding to the incident. Do I have that part right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. But it's not just okay. limited like to these two vendors. It can be any. It's 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 open. And if you will well, write if it's down the not script, those two yeah. vendors, I got to write the script. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which or is it can be for me. <laughs> or it can be notified like the syslog message or SNMP trap. So you can also utilize the uh, CM system, you know, to, to get additional context, you know, for okay. monitoring. So in addition to the, the two vendors you support directly for firewall rules, where are the other enforcement points for the response part of this? What else can I respond to with these raised alerts? So then you can, you can for example, block it on, on ACL level. If, if you have you know, the information from where the traffic is going, so you can connect it with specific uh, script. Because also based on the flow data, the resource IP address, from where the, the traffic is uh, the flow data traffic is going so you can specifically connect it with the with the part of the network which is providing the the flow data we are working with okay and what are the vendors you have the pre-done scripts that i don't have to write to deploy acls uh, across the network i mean it's a, it can be any vendor in general because it's just matter of it's we are trying to uh, to make it open so it's it's up to up to end user if you would like to you know enhance it and use this this ability to okay so uh, i'm writing those that. scripts i just you it's not like the two firewall vendors that you have scripts you've written that i can use any of the acl enforcement i'm writing the script yeah just from a, a drill down perspective as well, there's like a heat map on the, the What's Up Gold side that gives us the ability to drill in and see which segments are affected by an outage or some form of, uh, of indicator here. So you know, that interaction is just literally click on the, 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 the red broken link there, get into, uh, into the weeds on, on the network and literally pull back detail as to what's, uh, what's broken and you know, from the Flowmon dashboard, I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this because uh, Jiri's gonna walk you through some of the, uh, the things that we, we, we pull back. But from, a, you know, from an ease of use perspective and the way that the product has been constructed, there are several, you know, several products that fit inside the, the, the Flowmon uh, product range. It all depends on what bits of, of uh, the security side you wanna see, but also then you've got like network performance monitoring and diagnostics. We also have anomaly detection. We've got you know, uh, various different um, products within the product itself that, that really bring into play the, the value and benefit of, uh, of Flowmon. So, and, uh, I'll, I'll whip through these and, and from a monitoring point of view, you know, knowing what's broken within the network, but not knowing why I think is a, a, a massive uh, flaw within what is potentially deemed as you know, successful monitoring, successful visibility. And you know, to add to the point where that, that visibility is, is in some cases just and trawling through a, a load of um, packet level detail, for some admins, it must be an absolute nightmare, especially on some of the larger networks, to to be able to get to that detail. So the sampling and and the visibility that we get from the uh, the infrastructure monitoring tool through through Flowmon, uh, I think it uh, really goes a, a long way in closing that gap. So I'm going to just skip through a couple of slides so I can get to uh, to Jiri's Jiri's demo. But to the point where, and you know, from a, a user perspective, where does the problem lie? If we tie that back to you know, some of the problems that we see, is it network? Is it application? Is it database? And that finger pointing exercise from a security point of view, I think it, and knowing what we can see within the tools that we have at Progress, I think it becomes important and apparent that you know you can, we can tie a lot of this back together. 
but ultimately it's it's almost complementary. So we can help network admins to determine whether this is an application problem because of the detail that comes from Flowmon, but also to the point where you know things like the load master piece where we can leverage the, the vantage point of the load balancer, we can see where where does the problem lie? Is this a front end issue? Is it a back end issue? So on and so forth. So that sort of you know that that user experience perspective where you guys are the the the, the the, the team on the ground trying to troubleshoot this and firefight this, the tooling that you've got at your fingertips through uh, What's Up Gold, through uh, and through Loadmaster and through Flowmon, I think is uh, is really key. So I'm gonna you know, we've we've spoke about the firewalls and and the sort of north south piece. I think what is also important as well is this sort of heat map. So trying to find or detect a a threat before it even starts to kick off in the, in the network and be able to shut that down based on a signature pattern or a behavioral pattern is going to be key to that breach point as well because if we can stop it at source or as quickly as possible any of that suspicious behavior then then gets shut down in a, a in a, a, a in an instant the other thing that we can do is to work with um, you know, things like the the packet capture files and trigger on-demand scans. So there's there's a piece called Flowmon Packet Investigator that if you need to and get some deeper forensics into what's happening within the network, the FPI can be triggered. So if there, an event occurs, if a particular condition occurs where you know, an IP address starts sending out spurious information, this can be triggered automatically to then capture that detail in a packet capture file for, for further analysis. Uh, again, either through third-party tooling like Wireshark or ultimately through the, uh, the, the, the dashboard within, within Flowmon. So you know, the network security piece with the east-west traffic and also the interdepartmental inter traffic is where ADS really adds uh, adds its value. And from a and from a, a a ransomware, malware, all that sort of perspective, it, it speaks volumes. Um, you know, one of one of the the key things from Gartner, I think, you know, we, we've all worked with Gartner over the years, and they're now saying that detection and response is. Uh, Furthermore, important than blocking and prevention, but to the point where and a lot of consumers are now spending up to 90% of their budget um, from some of the um, you know, from some of the, the, the issues that they face, it leaves very little on the table for tooling like Flowmon. So what I would say is, you know, we, we can overcome these challenges and we can start changing the way that security admins think as a result of having this type of tooling in the bag. We're not, you know, we, we're no longer sort of overly concerned with the viruses and, and malware because that just does its thing with the firewalls and it should become a bit more of a commodity. The, the real benefit is in, you know, in this sort of uh, these IT security threats and blends that are out there now. And, and it goes without saying that they're just going to get more sophisticated and, uh, and, and more apparent without the tooling. So I'm going to let Jiri just drill into some of the, uh, the the detail now. So I'm going to hand over to him just after we've talked about this slide, just to give context on where does Flowmon fit. There's a collection of tools. There's a there's a collector. There's a probe, and then you've got the the software modules underneath that with the uh, the, the Flowmon monitoring center. And bolting all this stuff together isn't that difficult. But when it comes to you know, getting the full visibility of the the network, it's no good just putting Flowmon on one corner of the network. You've got to put it on all corners of the network in order to get this this de detail into the collectors and the probes. The probes will also enrich the uh, the, the the detail with um, you know, additional information through the metadata uh, rendering that it does, which means that that you know from a the, the software that we we deploy then at the the, the um, at the network level there with the network detection and response, the full capture analysis and the application performance monitoring, all of this enriched flow data is beyond you know what the network would typically see through the eyes and ears of things like SNMP or or IP fix. Just wanted to edit one thing uh, to the, the diagram, like how the structure looks like. So basically, all of these data we are processing are based on the flow data. So uh, it's in general who who doesn't know the, the, the flow data, what does it mean? So basically we are working with, our flow data actually in general works with the uh, packet header. So all the data which are presenting in packet header are, are processed. What I wanted to show you here is actually our public demo, which you can also visit if, if you would like to 
you and in this case i would like to show how we how we uh, deal with the tls traffic or encrypted traffic analysis how, how does it look like and what could be the use case uh, for the usage uh this presenting the dashboard where all data are concentrated uh which are uh, you know stored or delivered actually to the to the collector and uh, we are working with uh, directly with with the flow data over here we can see actually how we can uh, recognize or, or what what why we should do it uh that uh like we know that uh, the security is the most important thing uh like every time and we would like to see for example if there is some uh, old device uh in our network environment which is still using actually really old the, the encryption uh, uh version because it's, it's coming like from the practice like uh i've been um, able to see it actually they had really really old appliance or actually device which was you know somewhere and nobody uh, knew actually that it's it's uh, on the network it had really old windows it was not uh updated and actually throughout this machine actually the, the infection uh, spread out so this could be really helpful to do like security audit if there is some actually uh devices or it can be also, let's say, some IoT devices which are not usually inspected, and it can be a potential, uh, like let's say, entry uh, for for the problematic, you know, or malicious uh, activities uh, across the network. So uh, this could be one thing. Also, we can see here that what I will show you that uh, what is the level uh, level or land actually of the TLS uh, key, because this is also important, like to. To understand like how much actually we are you uh, how many bits actually we are using for for the encryption and also with the connection like how many uh traffic or how much traffic was actually delivered throughout this uh encryption uh, level also i would like to show you for example the case which uh, was recently uh in my customer's location uh, which was they actually had the certificate which was pretty old and over here we can see the certificates which are already uh, expired um, and thanks to that we can also combine it with uh, for instance the alerting system so it can be delivered you know like the email like an email or or a syslog message to our monitoring system or we can also do uh, and combine it uh, that alert with uh, with the script because it's is the multi-platforming or multi-level on that uh, on our solution so it's it's not just uh, connected with the anomaly behavior this is also kind of like anomaly but it's related to more to uh, network uh, performance monitoring and diagnostic uh, thanks to that we can also understand like what's the traffic so let's let's take me take me I'll take you to the analysis where we can see the data on on deeper level so we can see that the traffic or actually graph uh, for uh, for which the traffic we are doing analysis, analysis, analysis for analysis for, and over here we can also see which actually direct IPs or let's say domains are using the the certificate which is not valid anymore. We can also see uh, if, with a few clicks that uh, which IPs actually are communicating uh, with this public IP. So easily with the right click we can do top ten statistics by and do it for a conversation. So we can quickly understand it's just processing the flow data which are related to this profile and directly show us like which IPs actually are related to that uh, connection. So quickly we can go forward uh, to, to, the, to the answer and uh, which is really like fast to understand and also the amount of traffic which was uh, sent across. It can be also connected with, uh, with uh, traffic which is, for example, overutilizing uh, our bandwidth or let's say some location which uh, has really low um, low line, like from the speed perspective, and you can quickly understand like what is the structure. Yeah, uh, not just let's say if you if you are monitoring this location with this NMP based tool and it's enhancing that visibility. Uh, we can also see it from from the because uh, right now we are in on the statistics level. Let me just show you quickly uh, on the tab list of flows. Where we can see the, the current uh, like direct session, which is related because each flow entry which we are having here is describing the particular session which was visible uh, in the network. Um, also, uh, over here I would like to show you one more thing, which is related more more to the DNS traffic, which can be also like part of the issue. Uh, let's say there is the use case when we 
can see like man uh, in man in the middle attack, like I described earlier, that where let's say I'm I'm playing like DHCP server, I will offering you know default gateway, I will provide the DNS server information, etc. So we can also see if our uh, IP addresses or actually users are using the appropriate DNS server uh, and it's not using you know some public one which can be also potentially a source of the leakage of the information for instance how our uh, domain structure looks like etc yeah, because we can go uh, onto the level how how the actually the, the, the dns query towards the dns server look like and there is also uh, additional thing that we can measure like how long actually it took for the server uh, to respond back uh, to to the dns requests uh, from the perspective of the of the uh, measurement so I, because you were sure. just talking about that two-way traffic, when you guys are looking at those flows, are you looking, aside from DNS, are you also on those other things looking for the, the responses back to know that that traffic got out and then there was a response back? Yeah, I, yeah, sure, I will show you. Let me just go back to, to DNS traffic. I will try to show you. We can see here uh, different types of the traffic uh, uh, for the DNS, if it's uh, IP for IPv4, IPv6, or if it's just, let's say, the, the, the reverse uh, translation. Let me just switch myself to output DNS and I will show you how does it look like because it was calculating me uh, the data on the on the statistic level, but I would like to show it on the list level. Yeah, the, uh, this is going to be like uh, you showing the flow data, which are using actually both direction from the from the source and the destination. Okay, let me go back here. I will do it a different way. More fast. We can also filter out the, the specific traffic we would like to see. Yeah, I'll just wait for five minutes. It should be more fast. Okay, so the and the that looks neat. So the point of the question was you're not triggering alerts on data that's not successfully or packets aren't successfully getting out in the back end. I mean, no, it's it's more about let's say the the, the structure of the data which which are uh, like asked to, to the DNS server and how they are, how they look like on, on the on the response. Yeah, so you can track the, the query and, and the response as well. Uh, also, like how does it look like from the, the IP? So you can inspect if this IP actually is is uh, how it should be. Of course, like uh, if it's like for internal, it's much easier. If it's for the outside traffic, then it's it can be problematic. But from the DNS perspective, we can uh, we have there a method which uh, which is doing the inspection of the DNS uh, questioning. So basically, if there is some uh, domain which is on 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 blacklist or is is basically malicious or is just uh, randomly uh, created, like let's say that somebody is trying to exfiltrate the data, so uh, the system for the anomaly detections will notify you about it. Where is the threat intelligence coming from? It's it's coming from us. Like we have uh, we have multiple sources. Some of them they are like open sources. Some of them are private. We are we are buying them and and providing them to our customers. So it looks like you're demonstrating here uh, threat hunting, where I'm going into the the overall reports and flows of the traffic, and I'm drilling in and seeing if there's things here that I don't like. Can you show us the the dashboard of the actual detected alerts and what that uh, investigation process of a triggered alert looks like yes uh so we are here on the on the security part dashboard so it's a uh, over here we can see like how many actually events were created the events uh they have the, like different uh let's say severity uh it's it can be also adjusted like for you because let's say you have specific part of network and uh, let's say the event which is created has the certain uh severity and also with with the combination of of the of the method which was actually used for uh, detection uh, i didn't mention that altogether we have like 40 methods and these methods are in, in total they have like more than 200 algorithms which the uh, which are leveraging basically the flow data which are delivered on this side uh we are actually mapping uh, the the the, uh, the methods or actually the events which are created based on the methods to meet the attack framework so we can we can point it out like what is the uh the, uh, the metrics for the Mitra attack and uh, co connect it uh, together so for example uh, it can help you 
uh, to understand like if it's like on a rise, you know, that there's like multiple multiple uh, values like in the, in the same time, and then you can go down uh, like for, for the data. Let me just scroll down a bit. So we can see here, for instance, that uh, what is the IP address, which is like mostly generating the okay. events. Can I, yeah. can I stop you there for a second? I want to see, this is alerts that happened in my environment. I want to investigate one of them. Can you just pick one of the yeah. critical alerts and let's do an investigation? Mm -hmm. So let's say I will, I will do, uh, for example, the blacklist IP. Yeah. So let's, let, me, let me take you there. So this is the analysis, and we we were having like the, the blacklist uh, detection here. So we know this the same IP was there, and let's see like what was actually uh, happening here. Uh, this IP address uh, created like multiple uh, multiple events, which as uh, wearing like unique ID, and by detail we can see like there was a communication with the C2 server. Uh, there was some traffic like sent sent across. We can see also which port actually was. Uh, used during the communication and also what, what was the target. So directly here, we can see there is a like, small skull, which is representing this is the black, uh, blacklist IP address uh, coming from the threat intelligence. And let me just open it for you so we can see a like, more detail. So we can see here there was just blacklisted IP on the level host, which means this is like a triggered by, by IP because it can be also triggered uh, by the host name or I mean domain or basically the, the part of the domain. The reason here is that we are also back compatible with the flow data from, let's see, routers, which are having the limited visibility on the OC layer level, where he, here we can see the IP and the destination IP. From the uh, perspective uh, of the detection, we can see that like, uh, when first flow actually came in and after, uh, after how long the, the event was uh, created. Thanks to the thing we are uh, we are using the last update actually not a uh, setup, which means basically it's reducing the amount of of the events which are created, uh, which will also reduce the, the additional noise, which some some solution can have it, and it will basically take more time for you from you uh, for the investigation. Okay, and and who told me that's a CNC? I mean, how do I know? Uh, uh, this I, not that I don't trust you, but <laughs> how do I, who, who, where's that intelligence come from? Uh, I'm actually, I'm not able to say because it's, it's coming from, from the, the private sources. And uh, this is our, like, you know, know how, how we are building the, the uh, threat intelligence. Okay. But there is, where, let's say, let's say see if there's a response then, okay, you've, I, I've, I've trusted you. And now I, I want to say, what, what, how did the system respond to this, if at all, or if it did respond, where would I see the response that was done to this? Mm -hmm. So I just want to show you uh, actually more detail, like on flow level, how does it look like? Uh, just for an example, you can also understand like uh, what kind of protocol is it, you know, how much data have been actually transferred. And you can see here that uh, this whole event actually were here like for 15 minutes. Yeah. And after minutes, it was over. Uh, actually, the blacklist uh, or this IP is also connected with another one, uh, which I want to I was planning to show you, which is the ICMP anomaly, and I will show the response. Okay, let me just open it. Over here, we are actually inspecting the the high payload of the traffic, and uh, it's on ICMP level, so it's really suspicious. And over here, there is like the the response on the uh, like traffic records where we can uh, we are creating the PCAP with all data related to this event. So it's uh, it's uh, storing the data only uh, for the, the source IP and the destination which was uh, found uh, on, on, on during this detection. Yeah. So you can after that like, inspect actually what was actually leaked out like based on that information, for, for example, and also the mapping uh, to Dimitri attack. Uh, to the re uh, response, like for example, like you were asking before uh, with the firewall. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have here that case like for, for in, the, in this demo to show it to you. But it would show up in that tab if if we pushed out an ACL or or a firewall rule. I mean, uh, it's it's running on the background. Uh, you will just see uh, that the script was actually executed based on that specific event, uh, and this uh, actually uh, method or uh, yeah or method is connected with, with that uh, appropriate script, which is running 
the networking. So it will take, for example, this IP address of the host, put it, you know, in, in, in the guarantee and, and that's it. And is there any functionality for workflowing here? Or I can connect this to my ticket because now I got to go clean this machine and do other stuff. So is yeah, you, you can you can you can add, here? for instance, a command. Yeah, or or you can categorize uh, that, that event so you can filter out based based on that. For example, if multiple uh, more, more people are working with the, the same solution at the same time, so they they know the, the status. For example, and I can connect it to a ticket system. I mean, you can you can you can <laughs> connect have to send a technician to wipe this in that way. Computer. Yeah, you, you could actually send an email, for example, based on that event that it was created. Yeah, because it's let's say it's it's in specific group where uh, the events are created because it's it's running with, for example, a certain subnet, a certain method, certain uh, severity, and it can be connected with uh, additional email notification, which can open ticket for you, for example, if you may know this. I really like the feature that you store the PCAP file for every event. How is it working with the retention time? I guess you cannot store all the PCAPs for all the traffic that you reserve. You will, after this is identified, mark these, and how long are they stored uh, mm -hmm. in the system? The, the retention capacity is related to the capacity of the collector. Yeah, so it depends like how many, how, how, how much space you are like giving to uh, to the packet investigator, which is keeping the PCAPs inside. Uh, it can also rotate, you know, after some time, you can you can set up, for example, I would like to keep it for one month, or let's say up to 80% of the storage, which is related to, to the PCAPs. It's more about, or to be understand it uh, on it, it's more about like a, a PCAP on demand. So basically it's uh, it's creating the, the PCAP, which is, which is related to, let me just show you, to, to this uh, the filter, yeah, because the, the event is creating automatically filter, and this filter is applied on the data which are stored in the PCAP. So you have uh, you have narrow set of data into the PCAP, so it will not have that much. Yeah, so of course. it's awesome. In most cases, we are storing tons of terabytes of PCAP data, and we are just interested in, in this small amount that is actually relevant for that event. So that's, exactly. that's cool. It Exactly, uh, and there is also one thing we have. Uh, we have function which is called like pouring buffer. So it means I just forgot to uh, mention that uh, to have this option, you need to have a Flowmon probe, which is you know physically connected to your network via span port or mirror port, and okay. and sniffing the traffic. It's it's also invisible. It's not participating at all with uh, with your network. Uh, also, you can connect it, for example, via tap. So it's completely independent. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, in interfering with your in network infrastructure. And I want to say that the rolling buffer is is uh, is function, which is that if we are capable to store a couple of packets. You can also set up like how many packets for each flow. So it means that uh, over here just explain that you can see that first flow actually came in uh, 1605 yeah and we were we were actually trying to uh or and sorry and the, the detection was created after uh, six minutes yeah and this is the reason because we are we are starting the uh, the recording of the traffic uh when actually uh even is created but the data are not there anymore yeah so we are using this rolling buffer so it, it's it's called here like uh history data so this kind of data are actually uh withdrawn and from the from the uh, buffer so you can have it so you have real data uh from that case when it happened of course if there is event and it's it's a long-term ongoing event so you have high chance you will you will get it right, but over here, thanks to the rolling buffer, you can also have it if the if the traffic is already gone, and 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 save it. Yeah. Uh, also, I wanted to show it here. Uh, for instance, that uh, because we we started from the middle, yeah, because uh, from the blacklist. But usually the attacks or let's say some suspicious behavior is coming from the scanning. I just want to show you that how we are dealing with that because uh, the system is also sensitive for uh, different kind of scans, because before you are trying to attack some service, you need to understand which ports are open, right? So over here, just for example, a quick example, also in the plain text, like the, for the users, they can understand what was the reason of the detection. And over here, 
that you can you can directly see that uh, there were like a lot of uh, sync connections opened like to uh, towards these um, ports and to this destination IP address. And this is really, really suspicious because only let's say partially of them were with response and most of them were with, without response. Uh, and from the even evidence, it's clear that we will uh, we are able to see actually they are just coming like sync packets. They are just you know alternating the destination port, but the source is all the same. So it can be different kind of scans or just let's say it's not normal and it's it's abnormal. I would say yeah. And once it's detected and it's it's continued with with the other thing. So we can just quickly uh, hunt it yeah? from the from the scans towards the others because we, we know that this IP address is participating in different detection uh, methods which were creating uh, an event. And after that, we understand, okay, some of the scans of ports which were open and it was continuing basically to the RTP dictionary attack. So it was trying to overtake uh, remote uh, desktop, you know, control uh, from, from the remote connection. They, it was doing like password spraying against uh, this service. And after that, when actually it was successful, let's say, so it was downloading the data. So also the system is uh, sensitive. Let's say if there is suddenly high transfer of data. Uh, and after that, actually the end was uh, uh, that the ICMP NMI, it was, uh, exfiltrating data out, outside of the network. And it's also confirmed by, by the upload, yeah. So it's using actually combination. Uh, and I wanted to uh, say that the, the, the methods are working independently. So thanks to that, we are actually good in that, that you can detect such a abnormal activity in different stage. And so if, let's say you, you will not be able to catch it in the start, so you, you can do it uh, in the middle or let's say in the end when it's already, let's say done and you have uh, exfiltration data leakage. So it means that you have also some proof and thanks to the packet recording. So you can work with that and investigate.